This is video five. Video five is going to be broken into two parts. The first part we're going to talk about radioactivity and the second type part we're going to talk about nuclear stability. Now we have already learned about fission reactions and in this video we're going to compare fission reaction to this process we call radioactivity. Fission reactions, remember, is when you have a nuclear excuse me, a nuclear change in which the um, relatively unstable nucleus is broken into two nuclei of about the same size, but not exactly the same. Whereas radioactivity, this is a spontaneous change in which unstable nuclei decay. Okay, so that's what we're going to look at first. Now we've seen these nuclear equations and what we've learned is that mass number and nuclear charge are conserved across the change. So this first equation right here is a classical physic, uh, fission reaction where we've got your uranium-235 nucleus. We bombard it with a moderately uh, a neutron that has moderate kinetic energy and then the uranium-235 breaks into two uh, new uh, nuclei, in this case barium-141 and krypton-92 and then emits three more uh, neutrons plus energy. They're all of these particles then are carrying a great deal of kinetic energy. Now radioactive decay is an example right here. This is where uranium-238, which is an unstable isotope, um, <clears throat> spontaneously spits off a little bit of its nucleus. In this case it is um, a helium nucleus splitting off the uranium-238 nucleus to give thorium. Okay, so this particle is called an alpha particle. Alright, and in this case you can see carbon-14 <clears throat> uh, splits off what is called uh, an electron with high energy and this is called a beta particle. Okay, and so you can see the difference between the fission reaction and the decay reactions in which in the fission reaction in order to get it going you have to initiate the reaction by supplying some neutrons. In these cases it's just a spontaneous decay. This um, <clears throat> spontaneous radioactive decay was first identified in the early 1900s by Madame Curie. Um, she noticed that uh, a sample containing uranium uh, was giving off some kind of um, radiation. They weren't sure exactly what it was. They just knew that it was um, changing photographic paper. So just like exposing photographic paper to light would cause a change in the paper, exposing uh, photographic paper to this, um, these elements in this rock were just doing the same thing. So Rutherford um, further studied it and he um, classified radi radiation, nuclear radiation, according to its penetrating power. So that's where we get the alpha, the beta, and the gamma. The alpha penetrated the least if you held a sheet of paper between the source and a detector you could trap the alpha particles. So it penetrated the least. Beta particles were more penetrating. Um, you need to put a book between the source and the detector and gamma rays were the most penetrating. It, a gamma rays would go through the book and the paper and it required uh, lead, uh, a sheet of lead to uh, stop the gamma rays. So that's how we ended up with the terms alpha, beta, and gamma. So what exactly are they? Alpha decay um, for example, if you have a, a plutonium-240 isotope, it is an unstable isotope, and that plutonium will spontaneously give off an alpha particle. An alpha particle is two helium-235 
excuse me, it's a, it's a helium which contains two protons and two neutrons. So it's it's a doesn't have any electrons because it's spitting off of the nucleus. This is just a picture of the nucleus, and um, the alpha particle spits off. And because you're losing uh, two protons in the process, you change the chemical identity to uranium-236. Um, a beta particle is an electron. It's a high-energy electron, an electron that has a lot of kinetic energy. And it's not an electron that is in the electron cloud around the nucleus. Here's an example with cesium-137 here. We're focusing on the nucleus of cesium-137 and it's an unstable uh, isotope, it gives off a beta particle. And the source of this high energy electron, like I said, it's not from the cloud of electrons or outside the nucleus, it's literally a neutron is splitting apart, um, the changes into a proton and the high energy electron. The proton stays as part of the nucleus and the electron is a spit out of um, the atom altogether because it's got a lot of kinetic energy. So it's not an electron from the electron cloud. It's literally a neutron within the nucleus breaking into a proton and electron. So that's why when a nuclide go undergoes beta uh, decay, the, um, the nuclear charge actually increases. And so it goes from a, an atomic number 55 to an atomic number 56. So it goes from cesium to barium. Okay, And then gamma decay... Gamma decay is when an unstable nucleus just gives off electromagnetic radiation. So in a lot of the um, uh, fission reactions and decay reactions that you've looked at so far, we haven't even put uh, gamma radiation as in the reaction because it, there is no mass or charge associated with gamma radiation. It's just this high energy electromagnetic waves that are given off at the same time that other parts are given off. But sometimes you'll have gamma radiation given off by an unstable isotope. In this case, it's plutonium-240. will give off gamma radiation. You still have plutonium-240. It's just in a lower energy state. So it, um, the, the nucleus itself is, is, is unstable, has extra energy. It'll just give it off in the form of gamma radiation. Okay. So those are the three basic types of um, nuclear decay. There's other types, but those are the three most common types. All right, it's summarized here in this table, the three types of irradiation. Um, oh, I wanted to show you something before I show you this table. Let's look at a little animation. This is from your book. There we go. First, we're going to look at carbon-14. Carbon-14. Isotope, polonium 
Okay, um, and now this is just a table in your notes, so you can keep track of that information and know what you're responsible for. So finally, I just wanted to um, bring us back to why we were talking about radioactivity in the first place. Remember we mentioned that, um, well, the uh, nuclear fuel is dangerous and um, the uh, spent fuel is also dangerous. We're going to talk about why it's dangerous um, in video 6, but for now uh, you should know that the fuel itself is radioactive and the uh, fission products are also radioactive, which means they're going to be giving off alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma rays. So in video 6 we're going to talk about um, you know, what biological effects this radiation has, but next we'll go to part 2 of video 5 to learn about why some nuclei are unstable in the first place.